two or three days of just holding on, you know, without being melodramatic or anything. Um, and then the uh, Australia sent over these doctors in a sort of a private plan, and then they got there and put me on the right medicine, and uh, from there, that was really when I could just let go and relax for a little bit. They had it under control, and then we got flown back about 48 hours later to Perth. We had a pretty, pretty good idea that he was in a serious way, that he had head and spinal injuries. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. Mm. Yeah, every parent's worst nightmare I've heard it described as, and he's, it's, you, you don't even know that what sort of conditions he is in the country. They were wanting to operate on him over there. We, um, that's when it was very panicky that we didn't have a say in it. But um, fortunately, the insurance people came around after a while and then they were able to talk to us directly. We just said, no, no, we don't. Dine him operator in Bali, please get him home. And, yeah, it was, it was pretty full for me. You know, we couldn't even say the word spinal injury. Like, what does that mean? Does it mean that he's not going to walk again? I mean, that just can't be true. That can't be happening to us, to him. Um, and it takes... I think it took us at least six weeks to be able to even say the word paraplegia. You know, it was just like, that can't be happening. And wheelchair. And go those. there and go to the wards where there were all of these young men with spinal injuries. It's just shattering. It's just, it, it, like, it's like it just knocks you flat and then you have to start your life all over again. It's not where you thought you were going or what you thought your life was going to be about or his. So yeah, it's like you go through a grieving stage. You go through grieving for what was so but then you get stronger so we've got a rehabilitation team like i've got two physios a week um, social workers nurses um, all these different people constantly checking in with me and uh, from everything we've been told it's um the, the speed of, uh, you know, the closest to the injury as possible is that it gives you by far your best chance of recovery. Mm. The first so we, 12 months. Yeah. Well, we have Emma coming at the moment who is an exercise physiologist who has trained with Project Walk in America. So she's coming to us twice a week at this stage. Um, and we're going to the um, Sporting Wheelers gym once a week. And he gets acupuncture and bone therapy and we're trying to swim at least twice a week. It's something you want to be as positive as you can about, um, but it's just a, sort of a leap of faith, really hope that there's no, um, there's no yes or no answers and there's no real statistics or no one can really give you um, any kind of indication of whether it will work or not, but you know, I'm, I just can't, be in a chair for my whole life and uh, I'm, I really am pushing to, to make a difference so um, you know uh, I, I plan on walking again 100% but there's every chance that it may not happen either um, I guess you know it's a 50-50 um, but things come back um, I've even just the other day, we've had a muscle in my leg come back as well, which was pretty exciting. First time it's contracted since I had my fall. So, yeah, things are happening. Some nights I stay up casting in my bad luck. Some nights I call it a draw. Some nights I wish that my lips could build a castle. Some nights I wish they just fall off. But I still wake up, I still see a ghost. Oh Lord, I'm still not sure what I stand for. Oh, what do I stand for? What do I stand for? Most nights I don't know anymore.